It is hard to pinpoint which machine-generated deepfake started public obsession with AI. The pop in a puffer jacket strolling the streets or Donald Trump being arrested. Or maybe it was the idea of sitting back and relaxing while a chatbot does research and compiles large volumes of online data into a cohesive message. All we know is, in 2022, a novel tech development captivated the public and hasn't eased its grip since. This will be the, the greatest technology humanity has yet developed. What was your first reaction when ChatGPT launched in November? It was eyes open and oh my God. Artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence. What is it gonna do for a lot of salespeople here? It's gonna take care of a lot of the mundane work. And as Google searches for AI grew five times in the past year globally, Campaign US was monitoring analyzing and collecting input from professionals at Google, Omnicom, Agilvy, Publicis, and other leading agencies and tech companies to understand the impact and to present to you. Bite-sized AI for marketers, a new crash course on generative AI and its impact on Adland, detailing the emerging ways marketers can amplify their work using AI with the most effective tools and practices. Truth is, AI is not new. To truly understand industry adoption of artificial intelligence before the generative era, let's dive into a little history. The foundation for AI was laid back in 1950, when mathematician Alan Turing proposed a straightforward test. If a machine could trick humans into believing it was human, the machine had intelligence. In the 1960s, MIT released a pioneering AI chatbot called ELISA. It used pattern matching and substitution mythology to respond to real-time inputs. In 2011, Apple released an intelligent virtual assistant with a voice interface. Arguably, Siri marked the moment when artificial intelligence became a seamless part of the public's day-to-day -day life. One of the most popular forms of AI in recent history is machine learning which can analyze large amounts of data to automate decisions. In the 2000s, a subset of machine learning called deep learning emerged with natural language and image recognition capabilities. The advertising industry has been using machine learning algorithms to make decisions on where to place ads across the media ecosystem since the mid-2000s. And since then, AI has taken over more and more aspects of advertising creation, with advertisers using algorithms to devise concepts, script campaigns, discover audiences, personalize messages, optimize spending, and safeguard against fraud. Artificial intelligence had been around as an enterprise technology for at least 10 years, making processes a lot more effective, efficient, from an automation, from a robotics, and a machine learning perspective. I'm looking at consumer insights to, con to trends and to kind of anticipate a lot of things that are, that are happening and how we can respond to that, how we can conform ad and marketing to that. Going back, you know, four years ago or five years ago, we started integrating large language models. Google did BERT. What it was really trying to do at that time was understand the semantic relatedness of different terms and queries, right? So it wasn't generative in the sense that it wasn't trying to then predict what the next term would be or write text, but it really did start to give us good understanding of the semantics of things. While the robot race took place in public, research behind the scenes led to the development of large language models capable of ingesting massive amounts of information that enable a new form of generative AI, algorithms that can be trained to generate new content, opening up new potential for businesses, marketing, and creativity. Microsoft was first to release a generative AI-powered chatbot in 2016. Called Tai, the chatbot was an experiment in quote-unquote conversational understanding engaging online users in dialogues for tweets and learning from those interactions. Tai learned from online users quickly, but without a strong enough filter, quickly becoming problematic due to the large amounts of racist, misogynist, and anti-Semitic inputs. Within 24 hours, the technology spun out of control, prompting Microsoft to stop the experiment. While Tai failed, it marked the start of the race for generative AI applications and other machine learning advancements. Generative AI took off in earnest last November, when OpenAI released its ChatGPT model to the public, prompting an arms race among tech giants for generative AI interfaces. OpenAI went out online 
scraped up all of social media, all of Wikipedia, millions of books, basically human thought as expressed online over many years in written form to an unimaginably large degree. They used algorithms to understand the relationships between the words and ideas and used that as the foundation to create chat GPT. Instead of just doing what uh, AI has been great at doing in the past, which is looking at vast amounts of data, historical data, and find patterns in various different ways. It can look at all this data and actually create text, images, video from prompts that come from people. So it's the ability to create using artificial intelligence. First there was shock, then there was panic, then there was a scramble to understand the implications. Then there was a scramble to harness this power and this energy, and I think that's where we are right now. So what is the impact of generative AI on marketers? Number one, faster, deeper insights. Sit on 11 petabytes of data, which is a lot of data, and can be just an overwhelming amount of data for somebody to cull through to get the insights or to get a story. The ability to ask generative AI to tell you what are the, the five key insights about this audience, tell me what their behaviors are. I think that that is going to just change the focus of what our teams do and they'll be able to use that information to tell deeper, richer stories about people, about brands, about our clients, and help to move some of the work that was maybe lower value work but was still very important and allow teams to really get at higher level strategic thinking. Number two, assistance in developing and optimizing marketing strategies. There's this dialogue where the AI itself may say, hey, we noticed on your website that there's a unique selling proposition that, uh, that, aren't, that isn't covered in this. Would you like us to focus on it? Or the advertiser could say, hey, look, the tone of this, these advertisements is wrong, or you're missing this unique selling proposition. And so then the AI can then translate that into more specific creatives or change the matching to reflect that. We have this measure called ad strength. And what ad strength measures is how well uh, is an advertiser's uh, query matching, you know, keywords along with their creatives, along with their website. How well does Google Ads think that those things go together? As we generate it, we also show you what that looks like. That score is, or that ad strength is changing, and we try and optimize it. The advertiser also has a feedback loop of like, as they go through and iterate, how well we think it's gonna work. Number three, scaling personalization to improve the consumer experience. Since the start of even just uh, traditional CRM and you know direct mail, it was all about personalizing an experience for a consumer to drive them to change their behavior or influence their behavior on behalf of the brands that we represent. What generative AI does now, which is really interesting, is that it can allow us to change the tone of voice, the, the framing of the, of the subject uh, very quickly to various different ways. Instead of just having something that's contextually relevant, we can actually relay it in a, in a way that is maybe more deeper personally uh, engaging as well. Accelerates the ability to drive mass personalization at scale because you can start creating, you know, thousands and thousands of variations of assets um, very easily and very quickly. The can entries had a lot of great examples. One for creative effectiveness was some work out of India where a Bollywood star, Shah Rukh Khan, was able to speak on behalf of all of the local retailers. <laughs> We used machine learning to recreate Shah Rukh Khan's face and voice to take the local store names in the ads. Is Diwali aap na apne Bas wale choice of fashion se hi kaprok ki shopping karna. Bas wale aajkal fashion se hi. A big box retailer, sure, they had the budget to work with him, but a mom and pop retailer that sold cookies on the corner wouldn't be able to, and he really was able to, through generative AI, take the message and tailor it to each of those 
millions of, of retailers and it was a big lift for all of those retailers. Number four, enhancing the speed, diversity and scale of creative. Algorithms to understand the relationships between the words and ideas. Um, the new AI techniques allow you to make inferences and fill in the blanks from those kinds of relationships. It's hard not to talk about ChatGPT, of course. Going directly to ChatGPT to ask for about various different things and it explains it in ways that is just much smarter than, than what Google would have. It's hard not to talk about mid-journey. It works really well in terms of our own processes for deck creation, for um, comping up work in various different ways. Just using stable diffusion overall, but we can augment it. It's a little bit more open, so we can augment the, the training data that it has as well. And then tools that are really fun to use is uh, Eleven AI for voice cre creation. You can create either a real voice or you can create new net new voices if you want to. Or Runway Gen 2 is a fantastic and, and fun tool for not just uh, video to video, but also text to video and image to video. Brands are already jumping in. In March, Coca-Cola collaborated with OpenAI to invite consumers to create custom art using ChatGPT and DALI that would be featured in Times Square. The FMCG brand also tapped AI to help produce its masterpiece campaign. And in September released a soda flavor, its set was created by AI. Another brand that has been quick to embrace AI is Heinz. The ketchup brand used generative AI to prove its supremacy among competitors. The Can Lions winning ad prompted Dali to generate different ketchup images, and a majority of the results resemble the Heinz bottle. Besides a handful of examples like this, brands have been hesitant to go public with the major AI-generated campaigns. The Heinz ad is a reminder that AI generates outputs based on data available online, meaning algorithms reflect the biases of the humans who program and train them. When it first was opened up for public use, if you asked it to give you an image of a lawyer, the, it would output 10 images of middle-aged white men. If you asked it to give you an image of a flight attendant, it would give you 10 identical-ish looking images of Japanese women wearing flight attendant suits. This was obviously a problem. There were ethicists in each of these large companies who were warning about this significant bias that was making its way into the training sets. It's part of the reason why we want to use this technology on top of our own uh, data assets so that we can try to control some of the biases. But we are also developing a few different things. One is a prompt engineering function within Omnicom that can think of all the different ways somebody might ask a question and you know, help to anticipate and make sure that the answers that the tool is giving uh, don't include biases. Another consideration holding back widespread commercial use of AI is the lack of laws around the technology, specifically around copyright protections. It does have those legal complications in terms of where the images are coming from. Agencies are navigating these concerns in several ways. One is to support initiatives that set frameworks on responsible use of AI in media for major tech companies and software providers. Coalition for Content Provenance and Authentication, the C2PA, is a standards body that ensures the provenance of content. It's a kind of encryption watermarking that is bound together with an image with the creator's credentials and the provenance information and travels with that content from the moment of creation through to the point of consumption. Microsoft and Adobe are just some of the companies that have worked with C2PA. The reason that that's important is it provides brands the ability to know that their content is brand safe from a, a generative AI perspective. We can see the chain of provenance over time. And more broadly in the industry, it also allows us to determine what news is 
accurate and verifiable with a clear chain of authentication versus what content might have been modified. Some agencies have opted to collaborate directly with tech companies, driving the Gen AI revolution, to get access to training and build more secure versions of the technology for their clients. We have partnered with many different versions of uh, AI capabilities. We've partnered with Microsoft to have a secure version of OpenAI's technology. That allows us to better control the biases. It allows us to test in a way that makes sure no data um, is ever exposed kind of to the open web or to those uh, we don't want to see specific client data. We've also created partnerships with with Google to have access to their large language models, including Imagine. There are some companies now like Adobe um, that are going out there and actually providing copyright-free training. Firefly technology is trained on copyright-free images, which allows you to then generate new imagery from their models that will not infringe on anyone's copyright. I believe Getty and Shutterfly are doing similar things. So working with those vendors to ensure that we're protected, that our clients are protected, um, is one way going about it. In the next three episodes of the series, we'll explore the ways that four key marketing roles, creative data strategy and media planning, are adopting generative AI to inspire you to flex your creative muscles and get ahead of the curve by deploying AI into your work. Let's dive into AI land. <laughs>